Hey Charmers! Today we're here with a dupe makeup video for you guys. We're going to compare high-end makeup and drugstore makeup to see which one is more worth it for you. Let's get started. First off, we have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer versus the Maybelline Baby Skin Primer. As you can see, they are both transparent. However, Maybelline gives a much more matte finish whereas the Smashbox leaves a natural finish. Here we'll test the finished look with a dab of concealer on top of the primers. As you can see, no big difference here. This one will just be a difference of the brand name. The performance was almost identical. Next, we have the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer versus the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. As you can see, the applicators are also just the same. When applied, the Tarte Concealer glides on smoother than the L'Oreal Concealer. But the Tarte Concealer dried out too fast, making it hard to spread unlike the L'Oreal Concealer. I also felt that the L'Oreal Concealer covered much more than the Tarte Concealer. Next we have the Milani Eyeshadow Primer versus the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer. The Urban Decay Primer has a wand applicator, while the Milani Primer has a tube applicator. Both applied the same with no big difference. Now we'll be dabbing a dot of eyeshadow on top of each primer. As you can see, blending the eyeshadow was not a problem either. The primers left both eyeshadows very pigmented with no fallout. Next we have the Wet n Wild Eyeliner versus the Stila Eyeliner. The Stila Eyeliner is a felt tip applicator, whereas the Wet n Wild Eyeliner is a brush applicator. It's hard to explain, but as you can see, the Wet n Wild Eyeliner is not felt tip, making it slightly harder to control your liner. We will now test how waterproof these eyeliners actually are. I wouldn't say they're completely waterproof, but both eyeliners held on pretty strong for the amount of times I dabbed onto it. Next we have the Milani Blush in Powdered Rose versus the Benefit Rocketeer in Rose. Milani definitely topped it off on this one with more pigmentation and just overall shade in general. Now we have the Hoola Bronzer from Benefit and the Matte Bronzer from NYX. Check out how much I'm putting on my finger for the Hoola Bronzer. With NYX, I only needed to dab a little for this much pigmentation. Now we have the Urban Decay 2 palette versus the LA Girl News Beauty Brick eyeshadow palette. The shades are fairly similar, so if you're okay with a few shades being different, then the LA Girl is definitely your pick. On the left, we have the Urban Decay 2 palette swatches, and on the right is the LA Girl Nudes palette swatches. I would say the LA Girl Nudes palette is a darn good dupe for the Urban Decay 2 palette. Now we have the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara versus the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. On the top we have L'Oreal and on the bottom we have Too Faced. As you can see, L'Oreal gave a much more lengthening effect. Now we have my favorite dupe, the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal versus the Colourpop Super Shock Cheek in Wisp. Becca has a gorgeous champagne highlighter loved by many, but few don't know that the Colourpop Cheek in Wisp is an exact dupe for $30 less. Now we have the MAC Lipstick in 314 Will Live Over versus the NYX Powdered Puff Lippy in Best Buds. Definitely didn't end up as a dupe, but both were great by itself. Last but not least, we have our Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist versus the MAC Fix Plus Mist. Here we'll test the finished look using MAC Fix Plus Mist and the Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist. As you can see, the MAC Mist left a much more matte look than the Pixi Mist. Let's test out how well both the mist set the foundation. As tested, both performed great. If you're okay with a slight dewy look, the pixie mist might do the trick for you. We hope you guys enjoyed today's IGTV and we'll see you in our next one. Until then, stay charming and stylish. Bye!